Hi guys, Paul from Professional Scale Modeler. Welcome to part two of our modeling techniques guide. Uh, in part one we covered the paint in the cockpit and in part two we're going to follow on from that with the weathering. Um, so we're going to apply a wash, we're going to dry brush some of the detail and then we'll cover actually gluing it in position in the fuselage itself. So we'll start straight away and we'll go straight to the spray booth and get our wash sprayed so on. So back at the spray booth, um, these are all well and truly dried now. So we're just going to give them a quick blast of a uh, highly thin Tamiya XF1. It's in the colour cup. Um, you can see just how thin it actually is on the um, cotton uh, kitchen towel. Sorry. So we're just going to give it a good coat and allow it all to settle in all the recesses, uh, areas, and what have you. And it'll just allow it to give it a lot more detail. Um, so a simple part, really. So on with the spray booth. Um, start the cockpit itself. Let me show them in shot. We're just gonna go over everywhere. Let's get a good blast. So we do get a little bit of overspray. Nothing too dramatic though. And then once we're happy, we'll leave it be. Throw it to one side. Same on the side panels. Make sure you guys can see there. I'm just gonna go all over. So because it's so hardly thin. It's not going to paint it per se. But what it does, it collects in all the gaps, recesses, panel lines that are inside, everywhere. And by leaving it upright, um, it allows it to gather the gravity, obviously, pulling it down. So. That's it, <laughs> basically that's simple and quick, a minute's worth of work, uh, I don't know if the camera will pick that up, but that adds a lot more detail to it because now all of the parts, I'm just going to get a bit more up the top there, there we go, well, obviously because it's highly thin you can use your airbrush to blow it around as well, so if you get a bit too much in one place, you can literally give it a blast and move it, but that's it, that's, that's how I wash them. So, that quick, that simple, uh, that'll be allowed to dry, it'll dry really quick because most of it's thinners, um, I'm going to give my airbrush a quick clean while I'm talking to you guys, um, that'll be allowed to dry, once it's dry I'm going to dry brush it and I'll show you my quick technique of dry brushing, and that is essentially the cockpit um, built, painted and weathered, so hopefully nice and quick and easy for you. Uh, we'll pop back over to the actual modern desk, my work area, and we'll um, get a bit of dry brush on. Right, back over the uh, modern workbench. I'll zoom in so we can see. This is dried now. It's literally been five minutes since I sprayed these. Um, whether you can see it on camera, I don't know, but you know that that's really darkened that RLMO2. Um, it's given that really worn. Um, weathered look so it looks like it's accumulated dirt over time um, same on that side as well just in all the little recesses the panel lines the gaps everywhere but more importantly in the actual cockpit itself so you can see on the seat um, behind the seat and what have you around the control areas there's like a detailed bit of foot pedal uh, foot plate at the bottom so again it gives it all a little bit more depth a bit more detail very very simple and I've literally used, what, five colours on this, and two of those with a tiny little red and yellow on the control lever, so not much work involved, and it gives quite a nice effect. But essentially something you're not going to see a lot of. Uh, again, on this, for a change, I might do the canopy open, um, so you can actually see inside. No part of the figure this time, like I did last time. But there you go. To me, it makes a massive difference to the naked eye as I see it now. It looks a lot different to the camera, it may not. Um, but to me, it does. What we're going to do now is a bit of dry brushing. Uh, my favourite colour is Tamarix 11. A lot of people don't like to use silver, they prefer to use a grey to give a subtle effect. I like the effect the silver gives, so it's what I use. Brush wise, I've got a Vallejo actual, an actual Vallejo dry brush. Um, it's a very, very short, stiff bristle brush, which is what you really want for dry brushing. You don't have to use a dry brush, you can use any brush at all. So you can get the likes of, if I can find one quickly to grab, there we go, there's one I've done before. So, you can get a paintbrush like this, cut the bristles down, that makes them a lot 
um, stiffer. So any of your type of brushes, your humble greens or anything you've got, this is a cheap no mark brush. I've literally, it was just a little bit longer, I've cut it down and it makes it a little bit more uh, rigid. If you go shorter still, it'll be even more rigid, but you need that slightly rigid brush texture to get the best effect out of dry brushing really. So Tamiya XF1, same with any of them, give them a good shake. All we're going to be using is the paint in the lid because it's easier. We'll zoom out a little bit so we can see. What we're going to do is we are going to literally load the brush up with it. Absolutely so it's saturated with paint. And then the part that may seem a bit weird is get all that paint off. Like almost every little bit of it. Um, I'll zoom out again for us so we can see a bit more. So you can see where the term dry brushing comes from because we literally want that brush to be as dry as we possibly can. You zoom in a little bit. So anything you want a dry brush, you literally you're gonna pass it, you're not putting any pressure on. So it's not as if you're actually painting it, you just go and past it and just catch it with the bristles. Uh, again, it may be hard to see for the camera to pick up, but it'll work best on the black parts more than anything. Um, just by the nature of the colour. What it will do, just any raised edges or corners or what have you, it will literally give them that silver effect which makes them look worn. Uh, anything worn always goes at the edges first. It doesn't work as well on the grey green. So we are mainly looking for the black parts. The camera will focus. There we go. So you can see there. There we go. The top part of it and all the levers have gone slightly silver at the top. Literally because we've dry brushed it. Not so much on the grey green in the background, the RLMO2, but that's by the by. Now the same, we load it up again. You don't need to do it every time. I just prefer to have an even keel and know exactly what I'm using rather because the less paint there is the harder you've got to press and you'll find you start knocking parts off etc so I've just literally done the same technique before um, and this time we'll go all over that bin all up the top so like I say you're not trying to paint it so you're not brushing it you're just brushing it over all different directions where you'll really see this take effect is on the instrument panel in a minute. But we are literally just going over and over and over. And it'll just highlight all those parts. You can see it there. On the grey. So you don't want it bright silver, but we're just getting all the edges to highlight. And obviously the harder the pre you press, the more of an effect it gives. So again, what we'll do, we'll load up the brush. I'm going to go into the pot this time and grab a bit because the lid's empty now. We'll pop it back in the lid anyway. So load up the brush. Get as much off as possible. You need to get as much off as possible because if it's left on there, it gives a... It's too much of an obvious effect. Um, so what we'll do, we'll do the seat. Try and keep this in shot for you. You can see the way I'm just dusting past it. Same on that trim wheel. All round. What we're trying to do is simulate areas of high wear. So the seat would lose its paint from continuous uh, the pilot in and out all day long. The trim wheel certainly will from being used you know, almost every time the pilot adjusts his trim. Um, just put a little bit more paint on. Just Foot plates at the bottom, I don't know if you can see them. There, there's one on the side of that control stick, so I'm just going to literally touch over that because, again, where the pilot's feet have been clambering in and out, it will be highly worn as well. It's uh, quite hard for me to do and keep you guys in shot as well if we do it that way. There we go, and I'm just going to get all the, the base, the foot pedals all the way around and just like I said everywhere you should be able to see that on camera and on the foot pedals you can see the edge of them have gone silver now so again it, because it's being used all the time it does get worn 
And the biggest place you can tell, if you look at the instrument panel, we can see there. No problem at all. I'm not going to put any more on the brush because it doesn't need a lot. I'm going to try and keep you guys in shot if I can. It's easier said than done. And we're just going to lightly dust over the dials. And this is where it works best without a shadow of a doubt. Because the dials are raised detail, they pick up the silver nicely. And really give a nice effect. We'll get the control stick while we're at it, edge of the gun sight. We'll get the other sides of those foot pedals as well. There we go, we'll have a little bit up at the top as well where it meets the fuselage. So we've got to press really hard now because there's nothing left on that brush at all. There we go. All up the sides of the seat. Down the side. Get the rest of that trim wheel as well. And there we go. So I'll pop that in the water just to keep it moist. So I'm not sure if I can do so you can see. Hopefully you can. Maybe if I zoom out a little bit, a bit better. My hand make it any better. There we go. So you should be able to see there all the foot pedals, the edges of the foot pedals have gone silver. Around the control stick, around the dials. Uh, the dials are really pronounced now. They look absolutely spot on. There is no decal on this one, I was thinking of the 172, which I did the other week. So again, you move around, you can see the seat. Well, I hope you can on camera anyway. Seat edges are all silver. We've got the very top, where this part joins the fuselage, is silver again. So it's a nice effect. It works quite well. So that is basically how I paint and weather the cockpits. Nice and simple. If you're going to put your pilot in, now is the time. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to quickly assemble this, if I can remember how it goes, like that, there we go, and like I said before, this kit literally just slots together, so if we zoom in again, you'll see, once it's all in together, it's quite a nice, a nice effect, with the dry brushing and the wash it looks quite well just simple way of doing it no mucking about no taking forever doing it it's probably even filming it take me a longer than an hour to do so nice and simple um, you can glue this in if you want to be honest it doesn't really need it what I'll normally do even though it's painted is I'll literally put a little bit of extra thin along the edges it will glue it but because you're joining two halves together, it doesn't really need it. Um, and then, like I said before, the reason I recommend this kit is if I can get this in shot, like so, we join the two halves together, the, you can actually hear it clicking in. Sounds a bit ominous, but it's not. There you go. No glue. Barely any gap on the fuselage halves. Nothing underneath, just your normal seam line to fill in. And that's no glue holding that together. And it is a strong join as well. Superb kit, absolutely brilliant. Whether we can see much in there now when we zoom in, we probably won't. Take her up to the cat the light, maybe bring the light down. See if we can see in. Camera's having a hard time focusing today for some reason. So there you go. Bit of detail, bit of interest. Just simply from a wash, a little bit of dry brushing. We've got a nice simple cock.